What is the anointing? You often hear people say, oh, that person is really anointed. Or there was an anointing in that service. What do we mean by that? What does the word anointed mean? Well, it's the Greek word shemen, which means to pour oil and to rub on. That's what it means, to rub on. And the idea was that oil, which symbolizes the Holy Spirit, which symbolizes God's power, it's going to rub off and get inside of you so that the oil will be part of you. So the reason why God anoints is he wants himself to rub off on you. You know, even in the English language, we have a phrase that says that person is rubbing off on you. If you're not careful, they're going to rub off on you. And the idea is you're going to start to think like those people. You're going to feel like those people. You're going to be more like them. And that's the reason why God anoints. He wants himself to rub off on you. So in simple definition, the anointing is the, is the power of God in manifestation. Oh, see, God is everywhere. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. But the anointing is when he manifests. That means his power, his ability, his wisdom gets rubbed off on you. And that's why the Bible tells us that we've been anointed in Christ. That's 1 John chapter 2. And this is why Jesus said it is important that as a child of God who are forgiven of sins, that we receive the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead, and he's the one responsible for anointing you. See, it's not the Son of God, it's not the Father that's responsible for anointing you. It's the Holy Spirit. He's the one responsible for anointing you. In fact, it was the Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus. And this is why he's referred to as the Messiah. Messiah is the Hebrew word for the Greek word Christ. And those words mean the, the anointed one and his anointing. So Jesus is most defined by being anointed. In fact, he begins his mission in his t hometown of Nazareth by reading from Isaiah chapter 61. And there Jesus begins to read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He's anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. He's anointed me to set free the captives and restore sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. In other words, Jesus began his anointed ministry when the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove when he was baptized in the River Jordan by John. The moment that happened, he began his miracle ministry. You ever think about it? Jesus was just as much the son of God when he was a, a child that, than when he was at 30 years old. But he didn't perform any miracles until the anointing came on him. You think about it. The first miracle the Bible says he, he did was the turning of water into wine. And the Bible says this is the first of his miracles that he did. And so that means he didn't do any miracles before that. Because even though he was God's son, he wasn't anointed yet. But once the anointing came on him, he had the ability to preach. See, you can't even preach well and teach well without the anointing. Jesus healed the sick because he was anointed. Acts 10.38, Peter says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Healing comes from the anointing. This is, I mean, I have a, a tremendous healing ministry. I've seen the blind, people born blind, receive their sight. I've seen those with crutches and walkers get healed. So they started not to walk, but run. I've seen incredible miracles, cancers disappearing. But see, I don't have, as a human being, any power to do that. Nor do I have that power just because I'm God's child. Just as Jesus was as is the eternal son of God, he didn't have any power until the Holy Spirit came on him. And when the Holy Spirit came on me and filled me, then I had power to heal. I had power to teach and preach. See, I had power to cast out demons. Jesus said, I drive out demons by the Spirit of God. Jesus didn't say, I drive out demons by my virtue as the divine son. No, 
He said, I do it by the Spirit of God. Jesus' deliverance ministry was by the Spirit of God. So the ability to preach, heal, cast out demons, the ability to be a leader, the ability to operate in your gifts have to come from the Holy Spirit. And so the good news is, the miracles Jesus did, we can do also. John 14, 12, Jesus said, the works that I've done shall you do also because I go to the Father. What does going to the Father have to do with it? Because if I go to the Father, I will send the Spirit to you. But the Spirit cannot come until I go. So when the Spirit came, we now have the ability to do the works of Jesus. Some of you have been taught that the gifts of miracles, healings passed away. Friend, the Holy Spirit hasn't passed away. He's in you. And it is through the Holy Spirit that we can do these things. And it's through the Holy Spirit we can be kept from deception. John writes in 1 John chapter 2. He says, you don't need anyone to teach you. And you don't listen to those counterfeit antichrists who are leading you astray. For you have the anointing in you and you know the truth. In other words, the Holy Spirit will guide us. He'll protect us from deception. And that's why some of you are being deceived so much because you haven't received the Spirit or you haven't released the anointing. How do you release it? By faith. It's like a light switch. Every house has the ability to have electricity and have lights on, but you got to turn on the light switch. And so you have to turn it on by faith and say, Father, thank you that I'm anointed in Christ. In fact, why don't you say that right now? Say, I'm anointed in Christ. I know the truth. I have the power of God to teach, to preach to heal, to drive out demons. Come on, that's you, child of God, if you've been filled with the Spirit. So are you ready to receive the power of the Spirit in your life? Say right now, say, Father God, fill me with the Spirit. Touch me in Jesus' name. Amen.